Hi, today I'm going to be walking through the two optimizer use cases within the optimizer exercise model. The two optimizer use cases are network optimization and production optimization. As you can see from the left-hand panel, these are broken up within dashboards for each, as well as the modules pertaining to both. What this walkthrough is going to help do is provide context of the new optimizer functionality within the construct of Anaplan and how these can pertain to these two use cases. As you can see here, we have our landing dashboard and it's going to tell us kind of what we need to do to go to these two um, optimizer use cases, as well as learn how to use the action and learn how to set up the line items within both. You can click next, it's just going to give us some more context regarding the finding of that specific action and what exactly is linear programming and what is the vernacular that you need to know in terms of the objective variables and constraints. And now, as you can see, those three things are broken out within the different modules for each of the use cases, constraints, variables, objectives. The first use case I'm going to walk through is the network optimization exercise. So you can see when I click on that network optimization exercise, it's going to put me on a landing page and tell me exactly what I need to do in terms of this exercise model. There's the input data, the constraints that we need to set up, and the variables and objectives. And there's going to be another video to walk through exactly what's needed within the exercise to fill out these three different types of inputs, but for now I'm just going to be walking through that completed exercise. First, let's go to the input data. Now this is all of your input data that is needed to help run the optimizer. So the optimizer, ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to get that objective function to either maximize something or minimize something. And in this use case, we're trying to minimize total costs. So what we're trying to do then is we need to set up all of these, this input data to then help drive that objective. As you can see here, for this use case, we have a supply network optimization. So that is, we are getting demand from a store by month, by SKU, and we need to fulfill that demand with the DCs. So we have the DC transportation costs from DC to store, as well as the plants that need to supply those DCs. So we have a two-pronged network. We have plants supplying the DCs, and then the DCs supplying the stores. So as you can see here, we have all of the input data that's needed for to drive that total cost at the end. We have the plant to DC routing, so the transportation cost per unit. We have the DC to store transportation cost per unit. We have the plant holding cost per unit, DC holding cost per unit, as well as a DC fixed cost on if that plant's DC is open. We then have our SKU demand by store by month in real time and then using dynamic time and a lookup we have it then narrated into this dynamic time or moved, mapped over to the dynamic time which is also within another video on how to set that up as the optimizer needs to use dynamic time. Then we have our DC capacity and our plant capacity. Now, as you can see here, we are fully ramped as far as that DC and plant capacity by month. Now, let's go to the constraints. The constraints are going to be what bounds your optimizer answer. This is going to be a Boolean formatted line item, as you can see. And the constraints are simply, hey, shipments from the DCs to stores, which is a variable, and the variable is ultimately going to be that output from the optimizer, is equal to the store demand, as you saw in that previous dashboard. We have the plant shipments is less than or equal to the plant capacity, as you cannot produce more in a plant than that capacity, and you saw that also within that last dashboard. We have DC shipments, which is also, a variable or an output of the optimizer is less than or equal to the DC capacity, which is also an input. And as you can see, these are all Boolean formatted line items by month. The last one we have is DC shipments minus plant shipments is equal to zero. Now, this is a balance constraint that says, hey, whatever the sh shipments from the plant 
must equal the shipments from the DCs. But the way that the variable needs to be set up or the constraint needs to be set up is that you need both the variables on one side of the formula. So we have them both on one side and it's simply equally to zero. So once you have this set up, we can go to the variables and objectives. And this is going to be the variables are the ultimate output of the optimizer. And the objective is what you're trying to either minimize or maximize within the optimizer. So based off of the output and those that input data of transportation costs, holding costs, etc., you're ultimately going to get a cost. And what the optimizer does is it finds the ultimate, the optimal answer for that specific problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this network optimization. As you can see, it said we got a green light that says the optimizer has solved the problem. Once we get out of this, we can see we now have what DCs are supplying what store by SKU by month. If you want to see this in a larger view, we can put months to the side here. We can see this broken out by month, as well as what plant is supplying what DC by SKU by month. So what the optimizer has done is it's found the optimal answer to find the lowest total cost based off of the variable outputs and those, that input data that we had on that first dashboard. So what I'm going to do is so that you can see something change is I'm going to go back to that input data and I'm going to put a zero capacity for plant one in January 18 stating that all of plant two needs to supply all of the DCs for that specific month. Now you can see here we have plant one supplying DCs one and two for January 18 for that specific SKU and also notice the cost here four million eight hundred ninety three thousand nine hundred ninety six because when we run this optimizer again I'm forcing all of the plant the shipments to ship from plant two which is ultimately going to raise our total cost so as you can see, that jumped about $5,000, as well as forced all of Plant 2 to ship to all of the DCs, because we have, again, put that, a change that constraint from Plant 1. That is the first optimization use case within this model, and a brief exercise about it. Next, we're going to go into production optimization. Now, as you can see, this is the same type of setup that we have for the first optimizer use case but it is now for that production optimization use case. And so this is, hey, what SKU can be produced on which line to give us you know, the optimal minimal total cost. So here we have the cost per labor hour by line. We have the cost per piece by line. So how much does it cost to produce that specific piece on that specific line? We then have the demand by SKU. We then have a capacity at the hourly level. So how much, what's the hourly capacity of each line? And then the run rate. So how many units can we produce per hour by line? So we're taking into account SKU production as well as labor hours. So we have a capacity on both. We then have a compatible SKU line. So what SKU can be produced on which line? Do we have certain SKUs that can only be produced on one line? Right now, when I go through this the first time, I'm going to say all SKUs are being produced on all lines, but I'm going to go back after I run the optimizer the first time and manipulate this, so then you can again see that change. Next, we again have our constraints, and again, these are Boolean formatted line items. We have the line quantity, which is an ultimate variable, or an output of the optimizer, is equal to the demand, which is the input data that you saw in the last dashboard. We have the production hours, which is Again, a variable output of the optimizer is less than or equal to the production line capacity, so that the capacity at that line level. And then we have the production quantity minus the production hours times the run rate, so we're ultimately turning the production hours times the run rate back into a production quantity is equal to zero. And this is a linkage constraint because our two variables are the production quantity as well as the production hours. So this is then making those two things equal given the optimizer result. Finally, we're gonna to go to those variables and objectives. So as you can see here, we have the objective up top, which is ultimately we're trying to minimize cost by both production cost and labor cost. And then we have the ultimate 
output of the optimizer, which is the production quantity by skew by line, as well as the production hours by skew by line, based off that production quantity and the run rate. So now, I'm going to run this optimizer. As you can see, we have the green light, so it has worked. And we now have the optimal lowest cost answer based off of which skew is being produced on which line. And to link that, how many hours of each skew are being produced on which line. Now you can see for line 2, skew A, we're producing everything at this specific line in this specific skew. So let's go back and say that actually skew A can only be produced on line 6. So I'm changing the compatible skew that this line can be produced on. So now let's go back to the variables and objectives and let's run this optimizer again. And now you'll see that I'm actually forcing the skew A to be produced on line 6 and what's that going to do to our total cost. So you'll see it increased the total cost by about $40,000. And we have now pushed all of SKU A to be produced on line 6. Those are the two optimizer use cases within this exercise and the final results of those. Please make sure to watch the video on exactly what needs to be done within the exercise to fill it out to get to these ultimate end results of the demo. Thank you. Have a good day.